got engineered fluids, dielectric coolant, EC100 in the tank. We've got 48 miners, okay? 600 liters total uh, of fluid. And what I want to show you now is the actual temperature, the operating temperatures that have taken place here. Now, you'll hear me talk a lot about delta T, the change in temperature that we get depending on how quickly we circulate the coolant. For those of you that have had a chance to download our slick primer, you'll know that there's a whole section in there that talks about ensuring that you get enough delta T or temperature difference. This temperature, channel one, is our input temperature. So our cool coolant is flowing in here at 37 degrees Celsius. Here, we're exiting the tank at 60 degrees Celsius. So we've got about a 23 degrees C temperature delta. Normally, we'd operate our tank up at about 65 C exit temperature. But today, because of the rain that we saw earlier, it's chilled down. Now that's one of the big advantages. We can ride that temperature gradient outside up and down. As we see the outdoor temperature change, we see this number change. As it gets cooler outside, this temperature drops, which then drops the overall bulk temperature of the heated coolant. What's great about that is as this temperature drops because of the outdoor air temperature, we can slow our pump down. Now, how do we slow the pumps down? Let's move down. And we're gonna take a look at how we have this set up. So what you're seeing here is the, uh, these are the power ratings for both of our pumps. So as we mentioned earlier, our coolant pump is operating at 0.9 amps, 240 volts, three phase. This one is operating, our coolant pump, this is our water pump, is operating at about 6.2. Now, how do we change that? Well, what we would do is here we have a variable speed drive. Our partners over at uh, Yaskawa have provided us uh, with these great units. So if I wanted to bring this pump up to 100% capacity, we would bring it up to about here, which is 60. And we hit enter. Now I want you to pay attention to the draw on the energy. So you can see that as I sped up the pump to 100%, our power utilization goes way up. You see, we keep, we keep drawing more and more power, and then we slow down. But the nice part about it is, is that I actually want to move the coolant as slowly as I can, but get my same exit temperature that we saw earlier. So in fact, I'm gonna bring this pump way down uh, to about 25. And just to give you an idea, if our 100% is 5.3 amps, if I bring this down to 25 hertz, which is about 45%, look at the amount of power draw. Look at how slowly, the slower we move the pump, the, the, the more we reduce this number, the less we get in terms of power draw. Now, in fact, because it's pulled out today, I can actually bring this down to about 22 hertz. That's less, you know, a, about a third of the total pump capacity. Now, we come over here, let's take a look at what our water temperatures are. This is the inflowing water temperature. This is all in degrees Celsius. So we've got 70, about seven degrees Celsius and our exit temperature is 32 degrees Celsius, about 33 if we round up. And our pump, if we look here, is operating um, at about 60% capacity. One of the big differences between the speed of the water pump and the speed of the coolant pump that we saw earlier is that you actually want to keep your water flowing as fast as possible. We want as much chaotic flow happening in our dry cooler because that chaotic flow brings new coolant in, or in this case, water, glycol water, brings that new water glycol mix in contact with the surface of the dry cool. And that's actually how we get more efficiency. So in fact, you wanna keep this pump operating as fast as you can, but you wanna find the happy medium between running it too fast and using too much power, right? Versus having this temperature get too high, because we wanna make sure that we you know, that we really, we want to find that efficiency point. And so you kind of play back and forth. And we've determined that today by operating at a 45 hertz or 45,000 hertz, our pump is operating roughly at about 60% of capacity. Now, we did, 
Now, we did just slow down the coolant pump, so I want to come back over here. So we slowed this down. Now, what's the impact that that's going to have? Well, it definitely reduced our power draw. But let's go back over and take a look at our tank and see what the temperature delta is. So now we're going to go over here and take a look again. And we're going to see that even though we slowed the pump way down in comparison to where it was, we got very little change. Now, I'm going to go over. We're going to keep the camera focused right here. I'm going to go over and adjust that pump again. Now, I slowed that pump down uh, quite a bit. And what we should see here momentarily, there it goes. We're starting to see the bulk temperature of the coolant. I've slowed the coolant down. It's now being more saturated with heat in the tank. So we're seeing our exit temperature actually go up. Now, you'll notice that our input temperature has not changed to 36.2. We'll get a little variation there because of the speed as it goes through the actual uh, heat exchanger. But the change in temperature that we're seeing here on the input, this is the exit, this is the exit temperature of the heat exchanger, the input temperature to the tank. That's changing because as we slowed the pump down, we're increasing the amount of heat saturation. And again, your target is to try and get this to be between 60 and 65 C. That brings us a minor chipboard temperature of about 75 C. And they're very happy to run all day long at 75 C. What we'd like to see is if you have any questions about the system, uh, let us know, send them in. We're always happy to have you come and visit us. We really appreciate you as customers, and we look forward to seeing you here at our lab.